All right, I want to welcome on my next guest. We've got Karen Loftus, sports anchor reporter, NBC Tampa. Karen, how's everything going? It's a wild time right now in the world. It is. Thanks so much for having me on, Zach. I'm looking forward to talking some bucks and a little lightning and whatever else Tampa sports you want to chat about. Absolutely. So, for, so, so we can well start off with the Bucks because the Bucks have been the biggest story in the NFL this offseason by far. Um, is the buzz down there, is it real with, with Brady and Gronk coming down? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what you're feeling on a national level is tenfold in Tampa right now. It's been the coolest thing to see. And as you know, I moved down here at the end of January. So I got here and then shortly after it was like, the rumors of Tom Brady coming here. And it's like, no way. There's no way he's going to come down here. And then sure enough, Tom Brady comes here. And everybody's riding so high off of that. And that's amazing. It's going to change the franchise. And then just when you think things can't look any better for the Bucks, they go ahead and Rob Gronkowski too. So if you thought it could get any more exciting on top of Tom Brady. And then on top of that, on the other side of the ball, you know, people in here in Tampa know how good the defense is. So for them to solidify the defensive side of the ball, too, with Shaq Barrett mainly um, at the top of that list, expectations and excitement are, yeah. I was going to say higher than ever, but I can't really speak to how it's been before. But talking to people here, yeah. it's higher than it's ever been. Yeah, no. So it's like you, Gronk, and Tom are like the big three. You should get like a poster or something. Like just Basically, like, oh. I'm glad you brought that up. Like that we were working on that. <laughs> no, definitely. And then on the defensive side, but did they also grab um, the kid from Minnesota, Winfield Jr.? Yes. I love. Yes. I want. He was phenomenal. I thought he was a steal. I thought he was a steal. Yeah, he's it, incredibly explosive, and he's somebody that they needed. They needed some more depth there in the secondary. So I think he's going to be a really good addition. And the things that I've heard about him, um, all positive things as far as what he can do and contribute soon. Definitely, definitely. And he's got it in his genes. So, exactly. like, his father, his father played, too. And then on the offensive line, I know they went and got Jedrick Wills from Alabama to shore up the offensive line. I actually went to high school with Donovan Smith. So, I'm always keeping track of – he was in my he was in my art class. So, he, we, we, I wasn't the best drawer. He was probably – he was a lot better. But, no, yeah, so I've always been keeping up. But that offensive line's looking great right now, and it looks like they're trying to give as much protection to Brady as possible. Yeah, and that was a priority going into the draft, too, was – um, you know, solidify that offensive line, get depth in offensive line, especially a tackle. So they got Tristan Worfs out of Iowa, and he is just a stud. Oh, I mean, he's a – Oh, yeah, I mixed it up. I said, what did I say? Wills, yeah, Worfs from Iowa. Yeah, I liked, it's I okay. Liked him I liked him better. He had the great story with the, the red carpet and his mom. Yeah. I liked him a lot better. And if you've seen the video of him, like, jumping out of the pool and stuff, yeah. he's, a, he's just a freak of nature. When you can see somebody of that body size move as fast and as quick as the way he does – um, and he's smart too, you know, it's like, we've had a couple chances to speak with him. Um, and you, you know, offensive linemen tend to be the smartest guys out on Definitely. the field and he fits that bill for sure. Definitely. And then the, the offense was buzzing last year with Jameis. And then you, you saw the emergence of Chris Godwin. Did I, did I see that you have a chance, you had a chance to speak with him recently? Um, with Chris Godwin? Yeah. Was, was he? Yeah. We've done a few zoom calls, um, with him. We've had a few throughout the course of, um, you know, the, this pandemic stretch to have access to some of the players. Um, so I did get to speak with him. I mean, that's an exciting tandem, you yeah. know, with him and uh, and Evans there. I mean, that's yeah. that's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, and especially with the you got the uh, very I think probably probably I don't think it's even a doubt. It's probably the deepest tight end group in football between Cameron Brait, you got OJ Howard, and you now you have Gronk. So. Yeah, it's it's very it's wild. Yeah, I can't. The season the season is going to be fantastic. It's, it's I can't wait. I can't. Yeah, wait. and one of the, one of the other parts that they wanted to shore up. We talked about the offensive line, but then also at running back too. Um, Bruce Arians was saying he really wanted to get a pass catching back, and they were able to get two running backs um, in the draft with Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt, um, and then Ronald Calais out of um, I think it was ULL or UL Monroe, um, yeah. one of the Louisiana schools. Um, both of those guys should bring a lot of um, depth to the line, and they also both bring a different skill set. Definitely. So, so what are your expectations for the Bucks this season? Well, how specific do you want me to get? Are we talking record predictions or playoff predictions? Are they, play, you... are they playing in a home Super Bowl? Ooh, my heart, my heart says yes. Selfishly, I say yes. <laughs> um, and all the pieces are there to make yeah. it happen. And if anybody says otherwise that they think they are not a Super Bowl contender. I think that they either, you know, are biased or, you know, not fully understanding the depth of that roster. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think the Bucks 
have on paper what they need as far as players, coaches, and everything coming together. Um, but then it comes down to execution, get, you know, getting out of the division. I mean, the Saints are still in their division. Let's not forget about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then speaking of the Saints, do, do you think that they're, they're the biggest threat to them in the NFC this year? Because I feel like outside of the two of them, it's not, not really anybody else you're really scared about. Yeah, New Orleans is definitely their, their biggest competition there. Not sleeping on anybody else. I really think Teddy Bridgewater is going to do good things oh. at Carolina. Again, I'm biased because I got to cover him at my previous station in New Orleans, and I think he is incredibly talented. And then, you know, just going down the list of quarterbacks, and then you have Matt Ryan um, in Atlanta. So the, the, the division is no slouch, but I think as far as the Bucks' toughest competition, I think it will come down to New Orleans and the Bucks. And they have a, they have a Sunday night game later in the season here in Tampa, oh, which wow. I think could be like division on the line. Um, all, a bunch of us have that one circled as, as one we're looking forward to, Sunday night football. And isn't that, that's, the, that's the season over too, right? The two of them? Yes. So um, the Bucks are at Saints to open the season. And then later on, the second meeting um, is Sunday night football, which is on our network since, you, you know, we're NBC. So that's going to be oh, a wow. huge one. That's going to be awesome. That's so cool. That's so cool. And then flipping over to baseball. So we haven't seen baseball yet. And it's June. Um, just double checking because the days really don't matter. Yes. Yeah. Like it's Tuesday, 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 Wednesday, Tuesday. That's how the new week schedule is working out. But um, so baseball, they're, they're, I feel like last week, uh, very pessimistic about when kind of Major League Baseball kind of lowballed the players and the players kind of responded. I'm like, maybe this could be going for a while. And now it seems like they're kind of getting back on, I guess, good terms. What, what should people expect from the Rays this year when the season does start? So, well, even just touching on whether or not they're going to play or not, we just had an availability um, with Eric Neander, um, their general manager, VP of Baseball Operations, and he was saying we expect to play. Um, now, you know, you've heard, I'm sure, reports where some owners are saying they are willing to forego the entire season and just scrap it. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot to still be worked out. Um, I, of course, am hopeful that they are playing. The Rays are back in action at the Trop. They're doing, you know, limited voluntary activities and certain protocol, limiting number of players, et cetera. So that's encouraging to see. But the thing for them, and again, this just goes back to how exciting Tampa sports are right now. They are going to be a favorite this year. The, the pitching rotation that they have, I mean, think about how well they did last year, 96 wins, uh, incredible run in the postseason. And then you talk about they have their entire starting pitching rotation back, the depth of bullpen they need, and then their position players too. So I think they have the recipe to have a really good season. And it's not saying other teams aren't eager to get back, but when you have a team and a special group and that small window yeah. of opportunity, they are so hungry to get back out there and have some semblance of a season. I uh, see. I think since they're saying, I know that the, the owners offered the prorated 50 game slate I think the Orioles could be a kind of like dark horse because that's the kind of that's the amount of wins they normally have per year. So that maybe there maybe they're going to go forty five and five. We don't know. I don't know. We could maybe we see some postseason baseball in Baltimore. I I'm all for that. I, for those <laughs> out there who are going to be watching this that don't know, I'm from Maryland. I'm not hiding my allegiance here. That I'm <laughs> so if you want to speak that into existence, I know they're in the same division as the Rays, but yeah. Um, Let's put it out there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then flipping over to hockey. So I'm not the biggest hockey fan, but I did notice the incredible video. I'm going to put a clip on this when we put this out of the, the incredible video they did the promo to get back for, for, the, um, at, for the Lightning, for like the yeah. back to the season. It was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. So I'm going to, I'll probably throw, I'm going to throw a clip of it in here so, so people can see it. But what were your thoughts when you saw that? Did you just kind of just get your, your, your juices flowing? Please do. So it was really cool. Um, so for those of you who may not know, um, Alex Kalorn, one of their players, um, he had been doing this segment called Doc Talk, where he was doing IG Live on a jet ski, like totally Kenny Power style, um, going around to, because a bunch of the guys live on Davis Islands and have docks and stuff. So he was just tooling around and going to see some of his players, um, some of his teammates. And so that sort of took off. So that was sort of the, the basis of the, the jet ski idea. I don't know who exactly came up with this or if they all came up with it together. Um, but it was just super cool to see. And, you know, you're watching it and then you're seeing all these things and you're like, they're, they're all in jet skis. It's the flying V on the water and then, you know, everything like that. Um, it was really fun to see. And uh, I mean, Alex Kalorn is just sort of a, a character. And so when he started his doc talk, 
somebody tweeted at me, they're like, but where did everybody get these jet skis? And after he started that, several of his teammates decided they want to go out and get jet skis wow. too. So I don't know if all, I think it was six of them. Um, I don't know if they all own their jet skis, but at least, you know, three or four of them. Um, those were their own rides. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's basically, it's just like for, especially for like team social media departments, like it's just, it's just kind of like put it, it's kind of just setting a new standard. Like, Hey, like we see what you've been doing. Like this is what we're doing. And like, it was incredible. And they, they must've had a drone. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was like, you know, yeah. they went all in on this when you have a drone flying over. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, and I think it was kind of cool how they kind of portrayed it. Like some of the guys had gotten other jobs and they were doing other things and their like, hockey's back out and they just kind of bolted. It was, it was wild. And each cutaway to the players was cool because it was like very fitting to them and what they were doing in quarantine. Um, so it was, it was really funny. And then, you know, we were just talking about the Rays and how they have a chance and the Bucks have a chance with the Lightning have a chance to win a Stanley Cup. I mean, they were a hot team when this hiatus happened and who knows what's going to happen with them. So they're another team that is eager to, you know, crown a champion this season because they could very well be hoisting the Stanley Cup. And then flipping back to football, do you think that people's expectations are too high for Brady this year? I don't think so. I think that what he's done and his resume speaks for itself. So the bar has been set high because of demonstrated ability. And people know that he's reliable and his work ethic, he's dependable. Um, so I think all of that is absolutely warranted. And, and then on top of that, you put him into a mix where he already has good players there. Yeah. to work with so it's set up for success and set up for him to succeed in a system bringing his own skill set to the table does he finally know where the offensive coordinator lives yeah right and his own house so that's good <laughs> yeah he hasn't been in the police blotter again lately for no, no. passing in a park breaking into the other you know uh random neighbor's houses can, can you imagine just being like a random person and somebody breaks into your house and you're like thinking like what the, what do i do do i call the police and you look up and it's tom brady i can't, well, the I, can't... Thing, I guess my thinking is is like who leaves their front door open that's okay. true well it might be like a welcoming community where everybody kind of knows everybody but still it even is. now it's a pandemic though so you just gotta be you gotta lock now but... it is but there's no gate it's not a gated community like who leaves their door i i don't know Maybe, I lock my door when I go to take out my trash. Yeah, like, yeah. It's and it's it's sort of like like most. I know a lot of people have like no soliciting, but maybe it's like no soliciting unless you're the signal caller of the city's team. But like, yeah. it, it's, it's incredible. It's wild. And then one other question. I know it's not in Tampa, but NBA is going to be coming to Orlando. Is there any yeah. buzz about? Is there any buzz about basketball down there? No. Um, so one thing that unfortunately I learned when I got here is that nobody cares about the NBA. I won't say nobody, hardly anybody cares about the NBA in Tampa. Um, even though Orlando is about hour 15, hour 30 minutes away. It's just not an NBA town, which is unfortunate for me because I love the NBA so much. You know, I came from New Orleans covering the Pelicans. I had such a fun time covering the NBA. Yeah. So I'm excited about it, but for my job at FLA, it's not, you know, on our short list of, of things that we're actually covering. But who knows? Maybe I could petition to go up there. I'm like, hey, this is a big deal. The NBA was the first to, um, you know, shut down because of the pandemic, and yeah. they are going to be one of maybe the first ones to start back up. Um, and it's right around the corner, so. Yeah. I, I saw that they said, like, they're going to – I think I saw that they said they're going to open up, like, golf courses or, like – part I don't know if they said part not that they're gonna open up something so like the players have like their own little world it's like it was wild like they, I think they said like they'll have certain restaurants open so it's really like they're living at Disney World which is wild it's yeah wild. at yeah. the wide I think it's gonna be at the wild world of sports right like yeah the complex where they normally have a bunch of tournaments and stuff so they're sort of equipped for that so it makes sense um I'll be interested to see I'm interested to see how everything gets back playing it's going to be it's very sports specific too because then you think about nascar you know not to get too far off track but you know now how nascar is doing it and how their parameters lend itself to maybe starting more starting sooner than other leagues where you have contact and all of that 